I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty one Mercedes AMG E sixty three S Formatic Wagon Race Start. Oh my God, this thing's quick. It smells so good. Woo! <laughs> All right, I'll back off. Horsepower and torque. 603 horsepower, 627 pound-feet of torque from a handcrafted four-liter twin-turbo V8. And since we have drift mode in the E63S wagon, why don't we uh, test it out, Yuri? Ooh, the back end likes to come around pretty hard. <laughs> Let's try and get a better one, slightly. There we go, there we go, there we go. Oh yeah, just needed a little bit there. All right, let's head onto the road and not drift. So when we're at the track, we can do 11 second quarter miles uh, with a baby seat clipped into the back. But no baby. That's right. So that's not responsible. No, absolutely not. But this is my long-term tester. I have enjoyed this thoroughly for the last two months. And unfortunately my time is up. So here's the review of it. Yes, you are a new dad and this is your baby hauler slash daily driving everything car, which is what we've been saying for years that this is the perfect all around vehicle. And were we right years ago? Okay, let's break it down. Number one. I drove my wife to the hospital in this, and I drove my wife and child away from the hospital in this, so we had a really good time in that. Let's play a clip of that. First drive home for Junior. <laughs> and on the way home from the hospital, I tried to take him through Cliche Corner, but my wife had some choice words for that. Should we take him to Cliche Corner? No. <laughs> okay, not yet. But one week later, on his one week birthday, I was actually able to take him through Cliche Corner. First family outing, one week birthday for our little guy. How you doing at Cliche Corner, little guy? How you doing there? Oh, here's your first turn. I'm using exactly zero horsepower. Oh, I gotta use a little bit of horsepower up the hill. Oh, slowest Cliche Corner ever. I bet he's having a great time over there though. So, I am claiming the world's first official record for the youngest newborn to be a passenger in the fastest wagon ever through Cliche Corner. At a slow speed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you're shopping for a new Mercedes E63S wagon, click the True Car link in the top right corner to get discounted price offers. So to start things off with the most important thing, the baby seat doesn't fit back there. Sure does back there. Uh, my wife fits behind me at six foot one and a half, no issues. Nobody sat in that passenger seat the entire time that I had the car but I did notice that the seat was quite close. So I will definitely say that is a fault of this car. If you do have a child that's gonna be in the back and someone's gonna be in the front passenger seat, it's pretty tight. Okay, and we do have peasant blockers at the back, which is really cool, and a nice big sunroof. Yeah, it's really nice back there. My wife loved it. There is climate control back there. It's great. What I really wanna know is I've been having long-term SUVs this whole time and putting the baby stroller in the back and all the bags has been pretty easy. Is it easier in the wagon? Do you have a little more room or a little less room? Uh, you have a lot more room because it's a wagon, so the actual portion behind the seats is more than most SUVs. So there's a ton of room back there, but I do have a criticism is that there's not enough grocery bag hangers back there, there's only two. Okay, but you don't get as much height as you would in an SUV or a minivan, so if you're going plant shopping with the baby, you can't fit in the tall fiddle leaf trees. Luckily, I did not run into that issue. And since we are on the road, I'm actually going to put this in the mode that I've been driving in the entire time that I've had the car, which is comfort mode with the exhaust on automatic. And I am now in four cylinder mode, which I did not experience prior to this long-term loan because I just left every car in race mode, basically. Yeah, yeah, you need to actually like spend some time chilling with a car and when you only have it for a week, it's hard to do that because you need to be on the whole time. Exactly, so I love that I'm actually able to put into four cylinder mode. I did look at my gas mileage here and there. It's not very good, but if you're just chilling, you're just you're in comfort mode, you have a baby in the back, I'm never flooring this thing, like ever. And then the gas mileage is not that bad. It's like around like 20 miles per gallon or something like that. And then when you're driving without the baby, how does it feel? It's perfect because I just slip this little dial into race mode and I have my launch controls, I got everything. And the suspension is still really good. I was a little worried about the suspension being a little bit too stiff, but 
in comfort mode suspension, this is actually great yeah. because they softened it up for 2021. Yeah, we discovered that when we did our Audi RS6 E63 S wagon review. Check that out. Definitely watch that video because that is a softer car than this one. And living with this car for two months, I actually had a bunch of milestones in it. Obviously, I had my child with it. That is fantastic. I've probably ruined him for life by him experiencing this as the first car he's ever sat in. I also got to experience my mom's retirement, so I did fill the trunk with balloons, so it does fit a lot of balloons in the back, which is nice. That's good. And then I also celebrated my first Father's Day with it. So overall, my experience with this was great. You pretty much have to buy this from Mercedes now. Well, Mercedes has to sell it to me for like 20 grand. They can just long term it to you for <laughs> like the next five years till the warranty runs out. Yeah, Mercedes, let me know. And people are also wondering this. I had zero issues with it mechanically, maintenance wise, infotainment wise, nothing broke on it, which everybody's wondering because it's a Mercedes, but yes, it is brand new, nothing broke. And then looks wise, I know we like the last gen more than this gen. Have these looks grown on you or do you still prefer the last gen? I still prefer the last gen, but the looks have grown on me. I feel like it is slightly less SUV-ish for some reason, but I definitely prefer the last gen. The, the more I look at this and the more I see you with it, the more I like the looks of the RS6. Yeah, that's fair. It, it, the RS6 is like very aggressive looking. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not aggressive driving like this is. And I do really like these wheels. However, I probably wouldn't have optioned the black wheel Wheels, although they do hide the brake dust really well. What would be the Continental recommended tire for the E63 S wagon? The Conti Sport Contact 5. And then starting this thing up in the mornings, it does have a loud exhaust sometimes. Actually, it has emotion start. If you pull one paddle, it'll start in loud exhaust mode, but has this been like annoying loud for neighbors? Have you woken your baby by starting the car in the morning or anything? No, because if you don't press anything, it actually starts in comfort mode with quiet exhaust. Okay. Yeah. So Because like, I'm sure there's still some cars that you start with a quiet exhaust and it'll still be pretty loud. Yeah, no, this has been perfect. And the nine speed auto has also been really good. It's really smooth because like I said, I've been driving this in comfort mode and four cylinder mode basically all the time. So I'm not really sending it, but when I do, I mean, it's so quick. Like you use these paddles, you put it into individual mode, which I set up to be obviously how you know, I like comfort and everything, but downshift, downshift, downshift and send it. And it's just so quick when you actually want it to be fast. And then you still have the crackles and pops from the exhaust. Okay, but we're also kind of driving a Hellcat Charger this week and man. Well, we're not kind of, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Sound wise? Yeah, yeah. But this... let's, let's compare this to like a regular car. Okay, yeah, and especially compared to the RS6, but man, like the way a Hellcat sounds. Yeah, but the way an RS6 sounds, it's I, This I, is I like know. And then what, what I'm saying is I want a Charger Hellcat wagon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bring I, back the Magnum. Yeah. So a couple things before you drive, performance stuff, because you are actually gonna drive this back onto the racetrack. Zero to 60 is in Mercedes claimed 3.4 seconds, but we can get 3.3 seconds, which is amazing. And let's find out what the quarter mile time is when Yuri drives. Using the Draggy app. Yes. Launch control. But I'm gonna shift according to the head up display. Do it. Nailed it. <laughs> What's that quarter mile, Jacob? And then a little drift mode test. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's kind of tricky in this. Yeah, a little bit. I found it all right, though. There you go, a little bit. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really like the drift mode in this, to be brutally honest. Yeah, you can be honest, because I love it. All right, let's get back to the road. Okay. Why did that drift feel so weird for me? I don't know why it felt like that for you, but this isn't the easiest car to drift. I feel like every other car I've drifted, like I even felt better in that rear wheel drive Taycan. Yeah, well it is called drift mode, but we just did a donut, so that wasn't really Yeah, a drift. I think for drifting like high speed on the track, it's probably better, but yeah. for donuts, it's just not, it is not my vibe, not one bit, which kind of makes me sad. I'm like, uh. Oh. Well, I did send this one in Gimli, Manitoba <laughs> at the AMG Winter Sporting Academy. I had a blast drifting this one on the ice. All, it was all wheel drive. Yeah, but I put it into drift mode. I wanted to try it. Yeah, but it was you fantastic. Didn't do the whole, uh, yeah, on snow, whatever. Ice, ice. Anyways, <laughs> not a fan of that part. Yeah, well, good thing you don't really need that. It's just cool that you could do that. Yes, yes, compared to the RS6. Yes. It just makes me want rear wheel drive cars more. Okay. Uh, well, what about the launches in this? 
The launches are ridiculous. 3.3 seconds, 11 second quarter miles but, with a baby seat in the back. But the C63S, remember how hard that launched every time against the ZL, ZL11 LE Camaro. It was really good. So like, you know. I think this would still beat it. This in drift mode launch doesn't like launch hard. There's not like a drift mode, but it picks up real hard. Yeah, and it's actually a 12 second quarter mile in drift mode, which is still really impressive. So now the fun stuff, me getting to listen to what you loved or didn't like about the technology in this car. How has it been? Okay. Okay, so a lot of things I really, really liked, like the lane keep assist, the adaptive cruise, I would say it is nearly flawless. The infotainment is definitely a point that I still have not gotten used to. Still, two months. I, I don't like it. I can use it, but I don't enjoy using it. We do have Apple CarPlay, so that has basically saved the infotainment system. It's still too much swiping, too much clicking, too much home button, too much back, too much up down. It's just, I don't like it as much as like a BMW. How's the voice control? I didn't use it once. Dang, bro. Yeah. I feel like that's like the whole reason they're going to all this weird touch stuff and you like didn't even use it. Actually, I did try it for one thing. I wanted to know what my odometer was because you can't see it in the super sport gauges. You have to go to the trip gauges to see your actual odometer. So I said, hey, blank, what's my odometer? And it's like, what are you talking about? Hey, Mercedes, show trip. It'll show the trip, but not the odometer. No route guidance active at the moment. No. Yeah, Yo, you know what the future is? Yeah, voice. Voice control. Yeah, <laughs> nat natural language voice. Just like the Volkswagen. Okay, so my biggest complaint is around the app. So I did want to use remote start because I wanted to have the car cooled down before I put my baby in it. So I had to sign up for the app. In order to sign up for the app, I had to actually take a photo of the front and back of my driver's license to prove that it was me. And I really don't like having that data uploaded to some weird cloud. Yeah, and it's not even your car. Exactly, so it's like but you I had to you do it. You could have uploaded anything. Yeah, I well, could have photoshopped that for you and they would have taken it. Potentially. So I did have to do that. I didn't like it. Anyways, the app did work. It has a bunch of cool features, so I did have my remote start. Now, the big issue with the remote start is that you can use it for 10 minutes and then the engine shuts off, which is fine. But if you open the door, if you touch the door handle while the engine's running through remote start, it'll actually completely shut off. So I gotta do that, put my baby in it, run around to the driver's side, and then start the car like normally. And that's, and you can't start it with your key. Because there's no remote start on the key fob. And the problem with that is once you throw your baby in there and then you start it, then someone can hop in and drive it. Yes. Where if you do it with a normal remote start, it won't let you drive until you go in with the key and press start. Exactly. Honestly, I friggin' hate connected cars. Connected cars are definitely a like, pain. Like, I, I friggin' hate that. Okay, so my next two complaints. Uh, number one, we do have heated and cooled seats. The cooled is not very cooled. I wish it was cooler. We did have like 40 degree days, which for Americans, that's Florida. So it was pretty hot, but I would have liked cooler seats. Uh -huh. They also got rid of the passenger side controller for the seat. So they used to have a button over there beside the heated and cooled seats that you can actually heat or cool the passenger side and actually move it forward and back, which would have been nice with a baby seat because then without reaching over here, I can move the seat forward and back. Wouldn't it be nice if it just had that little button like Genesis does? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, the nice button that they had, they should have just kept. And my final complaint is, yes, this has massages and they are great. Getting to the massages through the infotainment, a little bit of a pain when you're in Apple CarPlay. So I wish there was a hard button for massages. All right, that seems pretty low on the complaint issue. Oh, these are definitely like 1% complaints. Yeah, but I mean, living with it, like that's the kind of stuff you're gonna have to put up with. Like, did you watch Matt Farah's Mach-E video on like him living with it? Yeah. And it's like the stuff he, he documents, you're like, you don't always get to do that in a regular review. So that's why all this like long-term stuff is actually cool. Cause it, a lot of it won't apply to a lot of people. Right, exactly. A lot and of like sense. what I can be connected I give them my license perfect I don't care like let's yeah, do it they're gonna love it and one feature that I really appreciated was the soft closed doors because sometimes when I put my baby back there I just kind of like don't fully close the door so it's nice to have soft close so some of my favorite stuff did you use the parking assist uh, not once oh man it's so good for like parking on Queen Street parallel parking but uh, reverse cameras 360 cameras did you use the thing that watches your back wheel yes so I actually use those a lot because I did not want to curb these wheels and it is really good it's fully zoomed in and you also have a 360 camera while you're doing it and the parking sensors are great so probably one of the better 360 camera setups yeah I, I, I love it some Fords will only show like one or the other like small or whatever this has like four different cameras at the same time maybe even eight I forget and then how about uh, satellite radio do you use tune mix uh, no not once I just set it to uh, Diplo's station because I think my baby likes beats it's nice Puts and, that, and that was it that was it that was it 
man. And then my wife had to figure out the infotainment because she hates that, so she had to put on her country music. But she did figure out the infotainment to put on the country music, so that's very good. And the seat comfort in here is great. I love seeing the carbon fiber every day. I love seeing the ambient lighting at night. I got my red moon. It's such a nice interior. Oh yeah, yeah. So the ambient lighting stuff, like every day, it just love makes it. you feel a little like nicer driving in it. Yes, if I have to get up early or late, it, it's fantastic. And then how about this new style steering wheel? Did you get used to it? <sighs> I would say I got used to it because I had to, but I don't like it as much as the previous gen. Okay. But I really like having the little dials that you can actually control on the steering wheel for your drive modes and stuff. And then a couple other regular old tests, uh, box tests, we can do the one from the comparison. Yeah. RS6. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And we can show the Mercedes box. Cup holders are perfectly fine. Yes, they are. And what about the visors? Oh. I already they know the answer. Pass, right? Yep. Three, two, one. Great job. And then how about the sound system? It's Burmeister. I mean, it, it's great. Nothing bad? <laughs> my, my Diplo beats sound great. Okay. <laughs> and it? we've reviewed so many of these E-classes now. We've driven the old gen wagon. We've driven the coupe. We've driven the cabriolet. We've driven the sedan. We've driven this wagon. I mean, there's so many different E-classes. Like, if you don't like a wagon, there's probably an E-class that you like. Okay, wagon over sedan for sure. Wagon overall. I mean, I'm just mm, going to say it. Yes. Coupe, the two-door coupe. Yeah, because no B-pillars. I know no you like that. No B-pillars. That is so sick that... Like, as much as I like the E63S wagon, I love no B-pillar Mercedes, I think, as much, if not more. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm team with this, for sure. As because you also can't get that in a 63. You can only get in a 53. Yeah, but it, with the new grille, it looks like a AMG GT. Right, yeah, it does. Yeah. Is that pretty much everything with your long-term tester Mercedes? Yes, this Mercedes was the best long-term tester. So I think it's time we get to the price. Okay, so this one starts at $127,900. Canadian. And this one's optioned out to $143,150. I mean, that's pretty reasonable for what you're getting, how fast it is, and there are a lot of rich people in the world, so it's not like that unrealistic of a car for a lot of people with families to buy. Yeah, and it has fully lived up to my expectations. I actually like it even more after living with it. I drive it in comfort mode with my baby, race mode by myself, so I still get to enjoy every aspect of this car. And if you're shopping for a new Mercedes E63S wagon and you live in the United States, click the True Car link below. There's a discount when using the Straight Pipes link. You can also shop for a used Mercedes E63S using True Car. And if you live in Canada, there's a Car Help Canada link below. So let us know what you thought of the E63S wagon as a family car. Are you stoked to see that it lived up to the hype that we guessed it would? three years ago. Still car of the year for me, uh, every year running. So let us know what you guys think and don't forget to watch our RS6 versus E63S video as well. And let us know in the comments below, what is Jacob's I got a need for speed long-term tester gonna be? Should I get a Hellcat? Uh, Urus? Ooh, maybe a Durango SRT Hellcat? What's that uh, four-door Koenigsegg? Uh, the Gamera. Yeah, yeah, I think that one. <laughs> yeah.